And when you come up, you can see the other thing happens is that they also go back into place. So as this becomes more expanded in the back, also the ribs can open, the space between them can open more. So they open also in relation to each other, and also they start to go back, because what happens in the front is that you, you have the, ster the sternum, the chest bone, which they are attached to as well, and as you bend, you know also from the very first ATM you did, when you bend, and you want to make everything round, the chin comes to the chest, right? Because it's all going like this. And so all this area becomes closer together, and it, uh, the clavicles in front come a bit closer, and all this sinks down towards the stomach, towards the pubic bone. And if, if you look at it, if it's a ball like this, then evidently the inside is shorter, and the outside is longer, longer distance and longer space. So the ribs in front here will get closer together. And they'll also get closer together, they'll also move down, and also depending on how much you round, you can also see maybe they go a little bit, they move to the back, but they also will have to open to the sides to make space because they don't go exactly up like this. They just open to all the directions that they can find which depends on the shape of them, your shape, and the bo the, how tight or loose the muscles are, how much each rib, uh, each uh, piece of the spine can move. Because if you're holding very tight here, which is very common in a lot of people, this area, it's very hard to reach, and it's very hard to articulate. So this is where you always see when we do the demonstrations that there's and I think also when you were thinking this morning about your spine, sometimes in these areas you can only think of three of them or two of them, maybe four sometimes coming together. So if this is held here more tight, then that's why people bend a lot more with the head and even more than him, I just don't want it to fall off. So imagine, because <laughs> this can happen. Um, and then depending on how much you, move, you bend here, but they can be sort of, you know, it won't be a regular distribution, which would be lovely and ideal, but you know how it varies from person to person. So it also um, varies by which parts of the spine are softer, and also by how soft people can get the chest bone to move down, how much you can... Now, if the, if the whole area in front is going to get smaller, like you remember with the very first movement that we did, this one. Yeah, you remember it, the flexors with the head behind? Yes, okay. So, um, then what happens is as you get smaller in the front, if you're going to expand, even if the shoulder blades don't move at all, and part of the reason of just putting the hands behind is that it anchors the shoulder blades, and you can feel that the ribs slide relatively to the shoulder blades. In other words, the space between the shoulder blades increases. There you are. Even if you don't go like that, opening up the shoulder blades on purpose, just the fact that the ribs are moving relatively to them, underneath them. Because you remember that I told you that the, the shoulder blades, they articulate with the arm and they articulate here, articulate is moving in relation to the clavicle, but they're not um, tied to it, you know, they're not uh, uh, held in any way except by muscles here that cover them, yeah? and a little bit, you know, they pull from them so that you can pull your shoulder blade around, but it's not fixed. So if you're going to slide your shoulder blade, your ribs underneath, so then the distance from the spine to the shoulder blades gets bigger. And then when you come up again and you see the spine, the spine gets pushed by the pelvis that takes, goes like this, pushes this up, this up, this up, all the way. And then when he looks up, look how all these spines have the space to slide, like cards or something together, the chest then has to open, and now the ribs get closer behind. See, they come close to each other, you can even see here how small the spaces are, how much they can open, and look, especially here where they're not connected, so much, if you let them, the spaces between them grow, and they can open forward, 
the chest bone is allowed to go also up and forward. And you remember also with Gilly, it was very nice to see this whole thing would open if you just allow it. Now, the, and, and then in the end, the neck can do also um, quite a lot. And the question is, um, when I say to you, if you could make somewhere softer or somewhere longer, what stops him from going more? Is it because this doesn't want to open more or because here they cannot get closer? Is it because this part of the spine is holding and won't let the stomach open forward? Or is it because there's something in the hip joints that they don't know how to let go? Or is it because here, you see, if the, the ribs are getting here closer and also closing more, because look here, they can open out to the side. See, all this is very flexible, the ribs. And the shoulder blades can fall away from the spine when it goes this way, just even if they stay in one place, they are closer to the spine. See, they get closer because the, because the ribs pull them down and together. So, would he be able to go more here if the shoulder blades would open more? Because then that opens the clavicles and allows the um, chest bone to go up more. Or is it because of here? that there isn't more flexibility because it's so stuck for so many people. So there's all these different things happening around the ribs. The complexity of the direction of the ribs is really infinite because it's, they're not only flexible but they're round. So the angles and combinations of how much they can open <coughs> between them, open forward to the side, get close in the back when you go backwards. And all this you can see that the possibilities are enormous, even just in the forward and back. So we're not even talking yet about this and this and this, which we will look at later because you a little bit felt it just so that you can compare now that even with the straight forward and down and up, how much there is in this movement. So the more you can pay attention to the details I mean, you can't sense everything, but the more of these elements that you can combine and bring into your awareness to um, involve in the movement, the easier the movement gets because each part contributes something so that it's not like everything, all the work doing here or in the neck, which you know how many of us have these problems in these movements with the neck because so much work is done here, and all this people don't even think about is connected with this movement at the beginning. So um, the more of, of these parts, and then you can think of this, and then you can think of that, and then you can think of the shoulder plates, and then you can think, oh, I didn't think of here, and I didn't think of my. The more of these elements you bring in, the easier it gets for each other, all the other parts, and the more you can bend, because each part does its job, and so contributes to the, to the intention. So. Uh, what I would like you to do now in that case is if I, if I can just have one volunteer.